What's up? This is Michaela, aka Lady Mac, and you are watching Waito Radio Backstage. Everybody lives in e. I want to thank you in advance for letting us make it clear to on the Waito Radio Show. Of course, man, DJ Waito, we are live at Legacy with Pastor Tabidi on your bleed Hey, what's good, man? What's good? I'm chilling, man. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Enjoying the Legacy Conference, man. The energy here, the excitement about the Word of God, yeah. and seeing that kind of zeal in young people, man. That blesses me more than anything I can think of. And you know what's interesting? You've kind of seen this conference grow mm. as well over the years, mm. man. So, because uh, you, was, you was getting down with this in the early days well a little bit uh, yeah. not, you know not here from the beginning but um, Brian and those guys you know were were gracious in having me come about five years ago yeah and yeah. and that's when I was first blown away man because yeah. it was it was it was crazy to see cats man in their mid-20s late 20s early 20s married up pushing strollers yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> going into the hip-hop concert man just and praising God man just going in man. So yeah. I was just like yo this is phenomenal. phenomenal. The Lord's at work. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you just recently planted a church in D.C., man. Yeah, by God's grace, man. Uh, a year ago, last July, the Lord called us back to the States yeah. um, to join with a couple of other brothers and, and a number of brothers and sisters that he's raised up uh, to plant Anacostia River Church yeah. in southeast D.C., and so if folks know Southeast, they know you spell it S-O-U-F-E-A-S-T. <laughs> right. You in Southeast D.C. And back in the day, man, that would have been um, the, the hottest spot in D.C. I mean, that yeah. would have been uh, when, when the crack epidemic kicked right. off and um, when Mary Barry was tripping in office yeah. and yeah. Uh, all that good stuff. That was kind of ground zero. And um, it's it's changed a bit. It's improved a good deal. Yeah. But it's, she's still got her needs. And uh, we just feel privileged that the Lord has called us there yeah. to plant our lives there and, and preach yeah. the gospel. I mean, you were talking about this earlier, the, just the activism, mm. the activist community mm. in that in that area, man. Um, do you find that in that context, because a lot of times with the activists, they black power, mm, mm. you know, they all of this. Mm. How how has that kind of influenced, you know, how you guys have to go in there to do ministry? Because yeah. obviously there's a whole set of apologetics and all that stuff that's, that yeah. might be a little bit unique that you... Man, everything is in is in the hood, man. Yeah. So, you know, you got the, the gods of nations and earth. Sure. And you got the 5%. I mean, you just got, you just got everything there. Yeah. And part of what happens in um, burnt out African-American communities is you get this rise of a kind of nationalism, a mm. kind of black nationalism. And it, it feeds on a couple of things. It feeds on self-love and the need for that. And it, and it feeds on a kind of political aspiration sure uh and and it's a, it feeds on a kind of us them right so you you sort of cast the african-american community over and against them those people yeah. and what they've done to our communities and not all of that's wrong the self-love the the sort of us them dynamic not all of that's wrong but it gets sort of turned up and hyped up and it gets turned in on itself mm. because it's not sufficiently connected to the grace of god the wisdom of god is not turned out uh, on mission uh, because it's, I mean, it's not Christian, right? Sure. Um, and so what that means for us ministering in the context is I think you have to respect that, Yeah. right? Yeah. And then I think you have to see the good in that, uh, the sort of self-love in that, the, the aspiration for uh, good things. And you got to recognize that at the bottom, people are people, man. Um, yeah. And so people in hurting communities are hurting people. Uh, and, and most of them are good people um, looking to do the best they can with what they have. And so I think what it's meant for us is we've got to come in the community, put ourselves in the community. You can't reach a community that you don't live in. And so that's home for us. And, and it's got to mean everything that home means. Um, and we've got to look to serve and to be neighbors and to minister mercy on the block. Um, and, it's, it, and it means we've got to encounter the unhealthy things mm. with a gospel perspective. Sure. Right? So I'm sure. thinking of a particular corner in my neighborhood. I drive by it almost every day, and the block is littered with people um, in whose lives you can see the waste that sin creates. Wow. Now, I've got a choice pulling up in the corner, and sometimes I have to, I have to preach this to myself because sometimes you pull up, you know, you, you're looking at a brother walking by the car. You know, yeah. you, you keep your eye on a brother. And if you're not careful, you know, you develop hard thoughts. Mm. And so many times I'm praying, Lord, this man can be redeemed and rebuilt. 
Yeah. This yeah. woman who looks to have been wasting away for decades, you can renew and restore. Wow. And and would you would you give me compassion enough to see that in people yeah. and love them and proclaim the hope of the gospel? And by your grace, would you save them and bring them to yourself and yeah. and make them new, all things new again? So, you know, as we're in the community, being a part of the community, trying to sort of parse between what's good and, and what needs to be rejected in sure. light of the gospel, we need to be doing that with hope, man. I mean, otherwise we just become self-righteous or afraid yeah. and we can't fear yeah. our people, man. We got to go yeah. to our people with the good news. That's good. Yeah. It's interesting, man. I'm, I'm just I'm hearing you talk about this and, and I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, man, this guy has ministered in so many different contexts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have your church plant in Southeast, mm -hmm. but man, then you're at these big conferences like Together for the Gospel, mm -hmm. you're in the Grand Cayman Islands, mm -hmm. and we always joke like, oh man, he was on a vacation <laughs> down there. <laughs> you know, cause it's, it's, you know, it's paradise down there. <laughs> but I'm just like, man, like, like, how has the Lord just prepared you in each one of those situations? Cause That's all cool. of those have different different it's challenges good, different good needs it's a good question that's exactly right because sinners are sinners everywhere you go yeah. man. sinners don't give you no vacation <laughs> you, got, you, got to, you got to work bro. Uh, you know that that's that's a fabulous question way man because when i look back on it by god's grace every step along the way has been preparation yeah so my days before christ as a Muslim, sure, it's been preparation for understanding the Muslim mind and, yep. and having had a number of relationships with guys who are Orthodox Muslim and guys in the nation. Yeah. Uh, that's a world I know. Yeah. Um, and and as an undergraduate student, man, you know, we used to have cats on campus like Malefia Asante and Doc mm. Ben and all that guys. So this world of kind of Afrocentrism and and that kind of nat it's a world I know, man. Yeah. It's a world I feel like I grew up in. Wow. Uh, and then to go from that into you probably say, know more about it than they do. I, I don't <laughs> know, but you know, it. it's, it's funny, man. It's just like uh, I was having this cab ride in Louisville one day, man, and this dude, you know, uh, had had a little kufi on and and he's got all this little paraphernalia hanging from the rear view mirror cab driver. Yeah. And I'm traveling with one of my partners, white dude man from yeah. Pennsylvania just just straight khaki and buttoned down right <laughs> and so I'm, I'm sitting in the back dude sitting in the front I'm looking at him and I, I see him coming at the brother he's setting him up to try and share the gospel sure. man and, and so he said yeah I was reading Ephesians this morning and da -da -da. and brother just started running down stuff man it just oh, you know he just just that rhetoric man yeah. and, and my partner looked over the back seat and he's like over to you, man. Bell me <laughs> out. Bell me <laughs> out. <laughs> you know, Bell me out. But God's been gracious, man. That, yeah. That's just a conversation I feel like, wow, I can't believe dude's still reading this stuff yeah. and talking about this stuff. Yeah. Anthony brought all that good stuff. But praise God. You know, let's yeah. let's chop. And so from that to just my graduate studies in psychology and thinking particularly about racial identity development, that was my area of research. Sure. Um, and sort of trying to help people navigate those waters. Um, to working in the nonprofit world, community-based nonprofit world. Here's the thing: the Lord doesn't waste a thing. Mm. He, he's efficient with our experiences. Yeah. So wow. our pains and our suffering, our our preparation, our studies, he he harvests that man. He's yeah. in all of those things. He's planting seeds in our life that he's going to grow and use at some other point. And there's a sense in which my wife and I feel like he's dropped us down in Southeast, and he's just bringing to flower. Um, all the things he's been doing in the years leading up to that, you know, and so we're grateful, man. We have a deep sense that we are in God's will, and man, that's a joyful place to be. Yeah. And uh, so we just, we just, we're loving the Lord right now. I, I'm more excited right now in my spiritual life than I've ever been. Really? And I've been walking with the Lord for about 20 years. Wow. And uh, I can't think of another time in my Christian life or in my life as a Christian minister um, where I have felt more privileged and more blessed yeah. and more joyful serving the Lord. So, How did you come to know the Lord kind of being in that Muslim space and then yeah. obviously? Well, it sort of happened in about sort of three stages, three, three stages. chapters, I'll yeah. tell you real quickly. One was the collapse of Islam itself. Mm. So I was um, zealous for Islam, led lots of guys into the faith. And uh, one year during Ramadan, I'm up early for the pl for the fast. I've, I made my morning prayers, and I'm reading the Quran. And as I'm reading the Quran, I'm reading Surah Maryam, the sort of 19th chapter there, which reads like a plagiarism of the gospel accounts of the virgin birth of Christ. Mm. That rocked me, man, because I wow. thought, here is my holy book telling me that Christ is virgin born. And yet as a Muslim, and every Muslim I know, would deny the unique sonship of Christ. Wow. What do I do with this? And then other things start flooding into my mind that, you know, the number of times that the Quran speaks of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
So how is it that the Quran speaks of the Holy Spirit when we are not Trinitarian? That's a Trinitarian That's idea, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and all the explanations about the Holy Spirit being the, the Archangel Michael and all that good stuff, it makes no sense. Or the number of times that Jesus is referred to as Isa al-Masih, the Messiah. Yeah. That's a Jewish concept. Wow. And there's a definite meaning in the Old Testament as to who the Messiah sure. would be and what he would do. All and of this, this is Muslims in the Quran. Contra- this is in the Quran. So wow. I'm just dealing with the Quran. I'm not yeah. even dealing with you know anything wow. outside of it. And not able to find satisfactory answers to that, man, at the end of the day, I, I, about a year, I kind of threw my hands up and said, this, this just doesn't stand uh, on its own terms. Well, that put me in a season of living kind of between agnosticism and atheism, mm. really. And um, my wife and I, mainly me, decided, you know what, I'm going to make as much as I can, I'm going to can all I get, and I'm going to sit on my can, you yeah, know, and yeah. uh, try to live that American dream yeah. thing, man, White yeah. House, picket fist, two and a half kids. And I'd never been more brittle, more cold, more wow. dead inside than in that period. And uh, it was in that period, man, that we was having a water cooler conversation at work. And a girl I'd gone to, to college with, who we'd known each other all throughout college, we are talking about, you know, people we respect. Uh, and people are naming off world leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin King yeah. and stuff like that. And Tracy was like, it's nobody I respect more than Thabiti. I'm like, wow. stop it, girl. Stop it. <laughs> like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so she was like, she's like, no. She said, you don't curse. You you know, you you don't you treat Christy well. You don't go clubbing. She started naming all these external things that had sort of grown up in my life as a Muslim. And um, the more she talked, brother, the more corrupt I felt. Wow. Because she didn't know my lust. Yeah. She didn't know my hatred and yeah. anger. She didn't know what was in here. Yeah. And that was the first time I experienced conviction, man. Just this dark, corrupting feeling of guilt. You know, I, wow. I no, I'm not that person you're talking about. Yeah. So the next thing that happened, man, this the third chapter was my wife and I miscarried our first child, mm. and the Lord humbled us. And I was sitting at home on the couch now, having left Islam, having felt the coldness and the corruption of, you know, moving between agnosticism and atheism. I'm at home on the couch, man, and this pastor named John Cherry comes on television. He pastor a church in Temple Hills, Maryland, oh, yeah, just outside yeah, of D.C. Yeah. Wow. So John Cherry came on BET. Wow. Uh, I had turned to BET to watch some rap videos, yeah. man. It was like Tuesday <laughs> morning at 10 o'clock. This dude was preaching, man. What a rump shaker, man. You know, so I'm like, that's shaker. where I was, yeah. right? Yeah. And so he comes on, man, and he's preaching Second Timothy that morning. And just sort of verse by verse and talking about the life of the Christian mind and study to show yourself approved. And I had a couple of thoughts that morning. I said, um, who rewrote the Bible? Because mm. I'm hearing now some preaching I understand. See, I mm. grown up in a little church with a cat with hoop for 20 minutes. Oh, I got you. You don't know what he was talking about. You don't about. know what he and, said. You know, you leave and be like, hey, well, <laughs> we had a good time this morning. What the preacher talking about? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and so seeing him preach in this sort of systematic way. Yeah. Um, the word was a lie, yeah. and God started drawing me by yeah. the word. So the first thought I thought was, who rewrote the Bible? Second thought I had was, um, when did Christians start thinking? Because mm. he was talking about the life of the Christian mind, and I had never met a Christian up to that point who could explain and defend the faith. Wow. And so I'm watching this guy, I'm thinking, this is different. Yeah. And the Lord was just drawing me by the word. So watched this show for a couple months. We went to Temple Hills. My sister-in-law lived in Southeast at the time. Yeah. Went to the church. He preached an exposition of Exodus 32. I'll never forget it. And uh, he was talking about idolatry uh, in that passage and then preached Christ from that passage, the golden calf passage, That's good. and preached the gospel. And things that I couldn't hold together as a Muslim fit together in the gospel. That's amazing. And, and in God's grace, my wife and I both were converted under the preaching of the gospel that morning. Wow. So that's about, that's about 18, 19 years ago now. Man. That's dope. Yeah. Man. Look, congratulations all over again. Man, yeah, amen, <laughs> amen, amen. amen. <laughs>